In a fast paced world driven by instant gratification and quick results, it's very easy to overlook the value of patience and resilience, especially in the business world. However, these qualities, folks, are the same ingredients that will power you to success as much as whatever your innovation and new product and services. And that is the topic on tonight's The Next Big Win show with my good friend and partner, Joe, me in the mood. But before we do that, we feel it's essential that we get some of the old blood circulating through the system ready for the show. Bear with us for a few seconds. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Not quite the Phil Collins there. Joe, good evening. How the devil are you? I'm doing really good, thank you. I'm doing great. And um, I love the topic of this evening's show. Um, so patience and resilience, because I think people give up too soon and too quickly, you know, sometimes just before they're going to have a breakthrough. But we just, we, we expect results to come too quick and too easy. And it's nice when they do. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. A hundred percent. Now, I think it's weird, isn't it? I think statistically, uh, if, if we look at it in a more formal framework, most companies don't expect any value. They've done surveys on this. Value is not created in the first five years of a business venture. And it's on after that first five years, that planning phase has gone by and we start to see the results. But you're right. People are too patient. They're too much on the here and now. Uh, and I think it's typically we underestimate the time it takes to get something done. We underestimate the cost and the resources that it needs, and we overestimate the benefits and the revenues that are going to come in as well. So I think that's a, a great topic. So which side of the fence you are? Do you, do you think you're impatient? Um, I think when I look back over some of the things I've been aiming to do in the business, um, I think I've expected results too quickly. I've been a bit naive about that in some areas. So, for instance, growing online presence, you know, growing... Yeah a blog, those sorts of things, and um, and building an online audience. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's easy to get super frustrated thinking, you, you know, you're doing your best, you're trying to put out great content and, and all of those things, and it just seems incredibly slow. Um, but it takes time. And I think, you know, having stuck at it, 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 it's paying dividends now. But we've got to keep going. We really have got to keep going with, with stuff. And also I think there's an element of mastery and learning. And I think sometimes we want things to come to us, you know, super easy and we've got to learn along the way. We've got to apply ourselves and experiment, find out what's working and what isn't and make those adjustments. And it's a process. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. And I think it's with that. I think when I heard that statistic, is it the old 10,000 hour model, they say approximately, do you become a, an expert quote yeah. unquote in something? And I think if you're trying something new and it's not your skill set, um, if it's not your skill set, that's going to add to the time that it takes there as well. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a bit of, uh, I mean, what, what, I find, sometimes find that people's personalities and what they're like in their personal life doesn't always match what they're like in their business life there as well. And it tends to be a, a bit of a mismatch. But of the two, I think lockdown certainly showed us, didn't it, in spades about how resilient business owners actually were. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think new startups, new pivots, new ventures. I think generally speaking, there's a lot of business owners out there, and I hold my hands up to it on occasion, are very impatient, want the results very quickly. So what, what's your thoughts as to why that happens, though? Well, I think, um, well, a few things. So, so I'll answer the question, why does that happen? But to pick up, it's Malcolm Gladwell's The Outliers, the 10,000 okay. hours. Yeah, and we need to apply ourselves ten, for 10,000 hours to become great at what we do, whatever that endeavour. And, um, you know, I, I wonder how many entrepreneurs there are who keep learning. I think there are some great entrepreneurs and, and people like Bill Gates you know, famously takes himself off for a week away just to do reading and and do learning, absorb, you know, and and um, and so on. Um, but I think impatience is also a virtue, 
we need a combination of impatience and patience. So the entrepreneurial impatience is great because it's that sense of urgency. It gets things done. It drives action. It makes things happen. Um, but then we need to be patient about the results coming through and not expect the results to be always overnight, you know. So I think we need both, but it's about knowing when to play which card. Yeah, so it's really interesting, actually, because I think you're right. That patience can manifest itself in different ways. I think there's patience with the process, with putting something in place, or whether it's, uh, whether it's something as, when I say low level, I don't mean it's not important, like a blog or a new service or a new way of working changing habits you've got to give it time to settle in for people to get attuned to it and see what happens there uh, especially in the world like the internet because it's you know we're competing with millions of websites people looking for different things and then there's i think patience sometimes people are too patient with things that are not working with personnel that aren't actually pulling their way not delivering what they should do maybe outside of their comfort zone and that i think sometimes we put up with too much and we're probably not impatient enough on those bits that are actually having damage on our businesses yeah it comes down to judgment doesn't it and um, also the emotion of patience because asking ourselves why we're being impatient or why we're being patient and, and is that is that right and it, it's, is it helpful and I think with with most um, new business ventures with no, with most sort of those big win, next big wins that we're going after it's about sowing the seeds nurturing them and waiting for them to come to fruition by doing the right things um, but I am completely impatient when it comes to people who I think are giving me BS or not <laughs> being straight with me or not being decent, you know. Um, and, and we need that element of impatience to cut through some of the noise and to cut through some of the, the stuff that gets in the way. Um, so it, it's about treading the line, you know, the right step at the right time in the right scenario, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you've also got to have that confidence in what your own vision is, what your own mm -hmm. belief is. Because I think sometimes you get too much noise coming from other people who say, this is what you should be doing. You've got to have some degree of conviction and confidence in what you are. I know certainly with people that I've employed, suppliers that I've done business with, staff that I've taken on, my timeline now for putting out with what I would call a mismatch in their ability to what, what they promised is much shorter now. Uh, and therefore, yes, I, you give people time and you cut them slack, but there comes a point you can smell it 100 miles away that uh, they're not quite doing what they should be doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's that sort of that tolerance, isn't it? So, um, you know, they, they say patience is a virtue, and I think sometimes it is, but quite often it definitely isn't. And it's a, it's a really um, interesting combination, patience and resilience, uh, because... You know, with, with resilience, that's, I mean, what does resilience mean? It means bouncing back. It means hanging in there. It means having grit and determination and, and all those things. And sometimes it can be hard to be patient. You know, it can be hard to know if this investment, if these efforts are actually going to pay off in the medium and longer term. Um, so that you're right. It's, it is about holding your nerve and that resilience is, is really key and being mindful. And I think there's so much stuff on social media where it promises you quick results and um you know you're going to get this overnight from people who've built a certain business um in a certain time you know in a certain way sometimes when things were a lot easier or different oh, yeah, yeah. Diff different times yeah. i think it was that old cliche about overnight success is typically several years in the making yeah, sorry, I've got an itchy nose. That reminded me of that old, I think you're probably too young to remember it there. There used to be a program on TV called Bewitched. Yes, uh, yeah, with, I've seen the um, the uh, the throwback thing. Yeah, yes. you, you <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the History Channel, no doubt. Yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've got an itchy nose. Um, so, but I think it's about you know, having a plan. And um, I, was, I was reading something from Harvard, where was it? Was it? It was in the Harvard Business Review where, you know, we underestimate how long things are going to take by a good 20%. Um, we think projects will be 20% quicker than they actually are, that we'll spend 20% less than we actually do, you know, and, and all of those things. Uh, so, so I think it's about building in that contingency and doing that from a financial perspective as well, you know, building that into um, the revenue forecasts and all of those things. It's interesting. I, I know that certainly during the uh, the lockdown phase, when resilience was something that was 
under the spotlight because not everybody experienced the same impact from lockdown. Some businesses did very well. Some businesses survived, even if they were in troublesome sectors. And what, that, what was underpinning all of those, I think, and that's also come to the element of patience, is those businesses that have got what I call good, good systems. So good data, good intelligence, good data capture, people there who actually understand the power of anal analysis and interpreting information there as well, being flexible, good communication lines coming out there. And all that adds to improving our resilience, as well as taking the impatience out of the impatience. Does that sound sensible? Probably doesn't. But yeah. taking out, removing the negative aspects of impatience. Yeah, yeah. It do, and so so having having this plan and, and sticking with it, but also know when to pivot. And this is, we're back to the judgment question again. Yeah. Um, so, so when do you do that? And I think it's about paying attention and being really mindful and not ignoring the signals, but not jumping too early as well. So, um, it, it's really, as you say, being analytical, using the information, interpreting that information, using your intuition, listening to what's going on around you and tuning into that and, uh, you know, and stepping in when you need to, but letting it grow if that's, you know, and stepping back and letting it do that if, if that's what you need to. So it's about intuition, analytics, and decision-making and judgment, I think. Yeah, you've got, you've got a blend of all those. And I think good judgment isn't necessarily saying, um, you know, I've got tons of data. It's about you can have information and data that says this is the path you should pursue. Yeah. And your judgment may be to say to ignore what the numbers are saying. Okay, take that on board, be aware of that, and saying actually, no, this is the direction I'm going here. That's not necessarily bad judgment, but it's actually being aware. It's somebody who just goes on, oh, I'll just trust my gut to do it this way. I think the reality of that actually executing itself very successfully is quite low. So people mm. who just say, I'll just rely on instinct and I'll ignore all that out there is probably quite a dangerous tar path to trade. Yeah. And this is the connection, isn't it, between um, judgment, decision making, and also patience and resilience. Um, so we've talked before about emotions being key drivers of, of all our decision making. Um, but it, it's really about, you know, what is driving the impatience? That that's the thing, or the or the patience, you know, and, and really understanding the underlying thing. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say, let's say we've launched something and you know, invest a lot of time and money, and it's really just tanking. It's it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. We keep putting more and more behind it. And how many people, I mean, there's a fallacy of sunk costs, isn't there? Um, which um, I think you accounting financial experts talk about, <laughs> which is we think that because we've invested all this time and money, we need to invest a load more time and money. So we don't waste the time and money that we've invested instead of just going up, oh, that's it. Let's, um, you know, let's not spend any more on this and walk away. Um, so do you find that that happens? Is, is that something? Yeah, very much so. I, I think this is interesting about the why. I think if people would invest a lot of time and energy and cash in something, that in itself can be an obstacle. Um, because there was, if it's clearly, if they're monitoring things correctly, if they're reviewing their progress against the milestones they set themselves and it's going according to that milestone, that's great. But there's a degree of comfort in there. If they're not monitoring, if they're not reviewing, but they're thinking, you know, I spent X amount of money on this here, X amount of time, but it's clearly not got market traction. It's clearly nobody's liking it. I'll say the Sinclair C5, for example, you know, on design concept is great, but it got to a point where it doesn't matter what was going to happen, that was never going to take off as a product in its own right. We've yeah. all got our own Sinclair C vibes here. And a lot of people get emotionally attached to businesses because well, because it's their baby, they created it from nothing, they've done it for a long time, they don't feel there's a, a way out and all the rest of it, and that's where effectively you can go down a spiral there as well. To me, I think you've got to you've got you've got to have an emotional connection to your business, obviously, but you can't be too emotionally connected when the evidence is clearly pointing out that you're going down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think. I think as well, you know, with with those examples like the, you know, the, the C5 and what's working and what's not working, um, there's a degree of interrogation that we need to do and understanding of what's working and what isn't. And I think this is a really key part of patience and resilience and, and you know, whether you decide you're going to ditch it or do it is um, 
it's understanding what's working and why and what's not working and why not so that you can intervene and fix those things and so that you can leverage the things that are and i think sometimes um what i see is is entrepreneurs just looking at things in the round and deciding it's working or not but not really digging into the why so um even if they've no intention of carrying on that you know that project that next big win they're not getting the learning for the next time they do something because um, there, there are lots of things, there are lots of potential reasons why something might not be working. It could be that intrinsically the value proposition, you know, that the, the thing that it's supposed to do isn't, it isn't right, it's off in some way. Um, it could be that the communication to customers isn't very effective. It could be the pricing. It could just be a great product, but in a, ru a rubbish box, you know, that there are so many different things. And uh, it, it is about really diving into the detail of that and understanding that so that we get better at it next time we do it. Absolutely. There's a lesson in everything. I mean, if I think of things on the old, old multinational, on the international stage, if I think about my own business, and I've made you know, lots of disastrous decisions, things that have been carried on too long. But I always feel that I've actually learned something from that that makes it better for me on the next iteration, the next thing there as well. So um, I think if you want to use the word failure, because that's what most people connect with, I don't necessarily like that term, things that don't quite work out. There are positives you can draw from that, positives you can't draw from a textbook, and that actually shapes you know, for your next iteration, your next big win, your next big pivot there as well. And you're right that people don't necessarily evaluate and look at it. They'll just see it as, oh, it's a disaster. But there are things you can learn from that and take away. Yeah, it's it's feedback, it's learning, it's information for the next um, iteration or the next time you do something something different. Um, and I, the, I see success um, happen and then people not know why something's been successful so they can't repeat it. So it, it's it's also about what's working. It's not just what's not working as well. It's. I was just picking up a point you were saying about reasons. I actually think there's also an element of the personal with people's impatience. So what else is going on in their life? What else mm -hmm. is going on in their business? If the business is the only thing, for example, and they might be the sole breadwinner in the household, if the business is something that dominates a lot of their time and attention, if they if they're feeling quite stressed because they're spending lots of hours. That impatience can seep through. So I think there's a lot that goes on in that individual leader, that individual manager, that individual founder's uh, mindset and makeup and their life that also impacts on how impatient they actually are. If you've got the luxury of, you know, a, a war chest, if you've got the luxury of a, a family inheritance or something, it's easier to be patient. It is, it is. And I think there's something around, um, you know, neurodiversity and thinking preferences here. So as someone, I mean, there's lots in the media at the moment about overdiagnosis of ADHD. Um, I, and I have had a psychiatric diagnosis of ADHD with hyperfocus. Um, so that means I can constantly, you know, if I'm into it, I'll concentrate and be really um, on it and won't want to do anything else. Um, but if it's not something I'm into, then I'm completely bored or, or, or <laughs> you know, we'll hop about. Um, but if I'm into it, I'm properly into it, right? And I won't let it go. So, um, and that, that's just me. And there's, there's, you know, lots and lots of different um, preferences as well. But I think sometimes by being aware of how we think and what our own natural style or preferred style of operating is, is, is really useful because now I'll go, ah, that's me, that's me being, you know, potentially about mm. to be impulsive, not going to do that. So, um, so by being aware, we can make better choices in the moment. Uh, about what we do, what we decide to do, and what we don't, when we give up and when we stick to things. You know, folks, listen. To this, um, if you are listening into this or come on to it later on, let us know. By the way, how do you see yourselves? Are you impatient? Do you feel you're resilient? Is that something that really uh, is of interest to you? Are you bothered by it? Let us know in the comments. Hit hashtag replay. Me and Joe will always check out the comments itself. Uh, so we'd love to know what your own thoughts are on this. So in terms of if we've got that, what, what's the other reasons we think that impatience exists? We'll talk about the, the bad side of impatience. Yeah, the bad side of imp impatience is, um, you know, when we get frustrated with stuff, um, blood pressure goes up, you know, stress hormones, all, all those sorts of things. So I think 
physiologically, if we're doing that up for over a prolonged period quite regularly, then um, that's not great. And that's not, you know, it's, it's not a great way to operate. So I don't think it's, it's particularly healthy to be impatient all the time. Um, I think as well, it can, you know, sometimes people, you can have great people that just don't operate at that speed that need time to think. So um, with impatience can come some impulsiveness and it is really useful at times, not always, to have those people will be, who will be more reflective, say, hang on a minute, slow us down, have you thought of this, you know, and really bring some, some value and some different perspective. And we can miss out on that if we're overly impatient, you know, and sometimes I've seen very impatient people, um, you know, stomp all over other people to get things done, not intentionally, but just a bit like an elephant, you know, trampling through everything. Um, have I done that? I uh, couldn't possibly comment. I uh, didn't mean to do it, um, but I'm sure I've done that uh, quite a few times, you know, in my in my professional career. But it's not intentional. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, done, with, it's done with good intent. I mean, I, I, I'll wipe yeah. my hands up. I think Serena occasionally trips into this programme, so I'll, I'll say that just in case she's listening. But, yeah, <laughs> I, I can be impatient and I can be a real pain in the bottom here because I'm, I suppose, so used to actually making decisions by myself. I'm getting better after three decades of actually thinking through and actually asking for his opinion more and actually listening to it there as well. But I suppose when I when I get pressure, when I've got lots of deadlines to meet, uh, as my own lots of plates spinning in the air, uh, I'll tend to get more impatient. Uh, what I found that is really useful, though, because I know you're, you, you love your walking, is actually getting out more to nature, more walking, more exercise, getting away from the hubbub of what you're doing. Mm. It's a fantastic therapeutic way of getting some semblance of balance back in there, uh, readdressing those hormonal levels, which are, you know, making you over anxious and all the rest of it. So as a, a tip, I would say people need to definitely be more active, get connected more with nature, improve yeah. their well-being, and that has a real positive impact. I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's about perspective. And that's something that things like walking, I know you do gym and yoga and, and various things. You know, all those things uh, help us just get away, do something else for a while, and then we come back with a renewed perspective and better judgment and, and all of those things. And I also think talking things through, you know, having somebody um, who you can trust from a business perspective um, that just as a sounding board, they don't even need to solve, you know, it's not about solving your problems yeah. and knowing the answers. Um, it's about listening to you so you can think out loud. Um, there's a great book uh, called Time to Think by um, uh, somebody called Nancy Klein. And she says, actually, if you, give, if you give somebody else the time to listen without solving anything, without just, just time to let them think out loud, what, that, what a great gift that is. So, so finding people that you can just talk to um, and hear yourself is is really interesting and i think the other thing is um is journaling i i can really recommend just you know jotting your thoughts down why you're doing what you're doing and um how that's working out for you because when you go back and have a look at that you know just a few lines every day um for a while when you go back and see that with with some distance you know in time you'll see yourself from a different point of view and um It'll be really you can learn a lot about yourself by looking back uh, and seeing what you were doing and the decisions you made and why and what you were thinking and how you were feeling. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if you can if, if you can go in the direction of trying to be more reflective and uh, be more inward looking, more self aware, it's really powerful. I think I like the idea of the uh, the perspective, getting that distance here. Uh, but, you know, improving what goes on behind. I think that's the biggest battle that all business owners have to, to meet, not cash flow necessarily or, you know, it's going to work, but that battle that goes on constantly because running your own business can be quite a lonely, isolating situation here. And you can create conversations in your head that do not bear the semblance of reality. Yeah. And a lot about businesses problem solving, you know, um, I think most businesses have, you know, cash flow challenges, have had them or have them from time to time. The research actually shows that in terms of small business uh, research, you know, a number of the banks have done different surveys and so on. And cash flow is, is a big concern for sure. And um, it's about having 
the mindset, isn't it, of, of, of patience, I suppose, with yourself that you will solve it um, and the resilience to keep problem solving and to keep moving forward um, and, and know that these things, you know, hopefully if you keep doing that are temporary because I think that's the other thing, you know, we might have a bad day with a customer, a bad day with an employee or a bad month or whatever it is, but be able to say, okay, well, this is it. This is what it's like now. And it's not always going to be like this. You know, that's the resilience bit and the, the patience to see those, those times through and just take it as part of the, the ups and downs um, of doing business. Yeah, I mean, that, we, we are human beings. We have a range of emotions. And I, I think when you have a bad day, when you have a bad experience or something's not gone quite right, it's, I can see how it's easy to extrapolate that as a continuum. But actually, if you look at the context, it's a small blip. It's a small setback. It's a small something. Don't focus just on that. If there are other things in context that can negate that. Again, I, I can't think of a single business that's established now or started that hasn't had its bad days, that hasn't made a misjudgment, that hasn't done something that's gone wrong. But it's the ability to think, okay, lick your wounds. Next day is a completely different day. I'm going to start all over again in the sense of how I'm going to reset my mind and go forward. Yeah. And it's the same with successes, actually. Enjoy them in the moment, you know, and then say, right, and then now we're back on it. Um uh, you know, and, and get ready for the next success. So, so it's 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 the ups and downs. It's the continuous moving forward. It's that journey, and appreciating that everybody goes through it. And that's why I think another um, key thing that people can do is uh, connect with other other people. It doesn't matter what their business is. It can be in the same field or a different field. But you know, most business owners are going through similar things or have gone through similar things whatever industry they're in 100%. so yeah having that network of other people doing this is is really key and we find that don't we at your next big win oh 100 percent. i mean listen we've worked together for two plus years uh and we're going to continue we probably can't get rid of each other now we're going to be working together for an answer so joe let's um because we always like to share tips with our viewers and listeners and all the rest of it um let's be really generous tonight so two tips that you would share uh being that chivalrous person, we can go ladies first. What would your two tips be to improve the, the patience and the resilience for a business owner? So my first tip would be that if you are aiming to grow something, it could be a new business, a new product, um, you may have an existing business with an online presence, then it's going to take longer than you think and it's going to need consistent effort. So trust the process, right? Measure the things that you can control, which are about you doing the right things to get the results over time. So don't worry too much about the results in the early stages. Just measure yourself on doing the right things that you have got, you know, every good reason to believe will get you the results over time. Don't give up before you're just about to break through and succeed. And I think my other one is around resilience, which is... Um, something I'm learning and getting better at, still not perfect, but a lot better than I used to be, is to take good care of yourself. And, you know, by looking after yourself, by sleeping, you know, sleeping well and getting perspective on your business and time out of your business, um, you'll make better decisions and you'll enjoy the business journey so much more from a resilience perspective. What about Sorry. yours? Two excellent tips there. Um, I would think my first one would be, not because it's more important, but the first one that comes to mind is to have, a good financial story, a good robust financial plan that says what my next 12 months is going to look like in terms of what I'm going to do in terms of my list and activity. This is what it looks like financially on a month by month basis. And that's what you review, monitor and measure your progress against. And the other thing I, I think pretty much I'm fully there with you. It's about the self care. It's about saying actually working 60, 70, whatever number of hours you do every week on your business isn't always a good thing. Take time away from your desk, go for walks, do something which isn't your business. Give your mind time to breathe, to relax, get some good quality sleep. I haven't quite got there yet, but I'm actually learning to do that self-care more. So whether it's walking, whether it's yoga, whatever you do, do something different. Look after yourself well-being wise and you'll find it will just serve you very very well going forward yeah great tips love both of those 
folks, listen, tell us what you think. Uh, do you have any tips to share with us? Uh, what do you think about patience and resilience? Where do you put yourself? And until next week, you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you on the next big week. Yeah, see you soon. And don't forget to go over to um, your next big win, the website, which is uh, being pointed uh, to as we speak. And um, because on there, there is a quiz that helps you uh, identify your preferred entrepreneurial style. And that will also help you with patience and resilience because you'll get some tips from us on what you can do to achieve your next big win um, with greater ease and success. Very nicely put. Until next time, folks. See you.